Hey guys, what's going on? This is another 13th Olympian, and today for you guys, I'm going to be bringing you all my Chiron build guide. And while this is my second video, or not my second video, but my second build guide for you guys, um, this hopefully this is a little bit of a better quality a build guide other than my Blona build guide. But of course, with the, my second one, there will be a little bit of kinks, I guess I I, I want to say. I'm still learning how to do build guides properly for you guys. But I um, hope you all enjoy this, hope you guys learned something from this, and if you guys want to see another build guide of any other god here on Smite, just let me know in the comment section below, and I will be sure to do that for you guys. So like last video, what we're going to do first off in the first section is we're going to be going over his abilities, then we're going to be going over his build, and then we're going to be going over his overall playstyle. Um, so for this one, I will probably only have one or two builds for Chiron. Um, there's really only way one, only one way I build him, but there's also several different ways you can build him. I'll be showing you, I guess, two ways to build him. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so starting out with his abilities, just like every other god here in Smite, he has a passive, three other abilities, and an ultimate. So his passive is called Herbal Medicine, which says, Every 12 seconds, Chiron collects herbs for Apollo Juice, which increases all healing Chiron receives for each Apollo Juice he carries. Each time he uses an ability, the lowest health an ally within 30 feet, I guess, 30 feet? Yeah, I guess, is healed to consume the Apollo Juice. This also affects himself, so if he was also really low on health, and he, let's say, used one of his other abilities, he will... Uh, be gaining health from that, which is also super nice. Well, and his passive is really good because it uh, allows him to sustain a little bit better in lane. Uh, however, if you wanted to, you know, uh, use your abilities to heal, um, it w they do cost quite a bit of mana each. So you're going to want to build Transcendence later on, which is something I'll be going over in the build. Anyways, with his ability number one, or I guess I'm just going to call it his one for now, it's called Training Exercise, which says... Chiron warns his teammates to evade the area, removing crowd control effects so they can escape before it explodes, damaging and crippling all enemies in the area. So this is, uh, his one is really used for uh, more or less of a poke at your enemies. Uh, it, it does do a pretty decent clear on minion waves, but really you want to like poke your enemies at it. But I will want to point out that when it says removing crowd control effects, it doesn't make you immune to it, like it'll just remove an effect that you had. Which means after you remove that effect, you can be hit with another crowd control effect. So you're not uh, you're not immune to it. So I want to keep that in mind because uh, some players, when they first saw this, they thought, oh, maybe he's immune, or it makes you know my teammates immune, so you know I can pretty much do whatever I want. No, that is not the case. Uh, it just removes the crowd control effect. You are not immune. So you know if if Aries after you use this, if Aries already uses all, you're not gonna be immune to that. Uh, you'll be susceptible to that. Um, and then his next ability, ability number two, Masterful Shot, which says, Chiron passively marks his enemies uh, as targets when he damages them with basic attacks or centa Centaurus, which is his ult. Uh, reducing the physical protection by 3%, uh, he may activate this ability to fire seeking arrows at all marked targets within range, damaging and slowing them. Uh, this is really good because, like it said, it slows them, so if you want to try to catch up to an enemy, you can go ahead and use Masterful Shot, um, slow them down, and just kind of ride them up like that. Um, that's really what it can be used for. It also uh, reduces their physical protections. It's not too much 3%, but in some cases it will do, it will help you a lot um, when doing team fights and stuff like that. And then now it's ability number three. It's called Giddy Up. This is his dash, or I guess you can also say his escape. Uh, Chiron gallops forward, damaging enemies, knocking up minions, and kicking enemy gods behind him. Chiron may fire ba basic attacks while charging. Uh, so it's really nice because it just kind of kicks him up. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of annoying when you get hit by this and you get thrown up in the air and kicked back. Um, and also really nice because you can charge your enemies while you're throwing basic attacks. And then when you're done with that, you can go ahead and use your two. Um, and pretty much just kind of wreck them like that a little bit. I mean, it does a decent amount of damage. So you can go ahead, wreck them with Giddy Up, and then throw basic attacks at them. And then go ahead and hit with Masterful Shot. And his last ability, but not his least ability, it's actually a really nice ability, is Ult Sen Senataris, uh, which says, Karen... Uh, transformed into a constellation and can fire three long distance shots even through walls. If Chiron would be killed during this ability, he does not die until he runs out of the time or shots. Killing an enemy when he would have died returns Chiron to life and health equal to the damage dealt instead. Um, and it also applies a mark, so it basically would apply the passive version of Massable Shot. Um, this is a really, really good ability uh, because it can go through walls one. It's really, it's actually pretty far too. And you wouldn't die until you're done with your ult. So let's say while well, you're in your ult, you would have died, but you have three shots left. Let's say you like you're about to die, but then you go ahead and use your ult, so you wouldn't die. And then you go ahead and fire your three shots. 
if you were to kill an enemy while you're in those three shots, you will live. Um, you will, like it says, you will return the health that uh, was equal to the damage that you dealt instead. Um, and then if you are still alive, you can go ahead and use your three get away. Um, and if you want to, you can go ahead and use masterful shot because this also places those marks on them. So it's ult can be really really annoying when going against um, when going against this ult because it does a decent amount of damage too, and it goes through walls. So if you're like really low health and then out of nowhere you just see a random like few shots come through the wall you're gonna be pretty scared um it's, it's kind of like the same thing with uh Giannis's ult because Giannis goes freaking across the entire map um Chiron is not so big but it does do go through the wall so it can be pretty scary going against that and it also makes for uh pretty cool sniping plays I guess you can say because along with Giannis's ult like I said um with Giannis you can go ahead and uh try to get some pretty cool snipes with that same with Santaris except you also have three chances instead of one with Giannis so that's really nice and that is it with all his abilities and after this we will be going over his builds and when I get back I will see you all then okay guys so welcome back here's his build um really so for a starter you're going to want to build death toll that's like the starter I'm going to want to get every time in conquest um but then when the other I guess items you have options you can go boots uh you can go spike gauntlet for the lifesteal or you can go morning star uh, later on in the build you will be going for transcendence with this build so going for Morningstar can help if you want to go ahead and go with Transcendence really quickly. Um, or you can go Spike Gauntlet if you want to go Soul Eater, because I tend to go Soul Eater with uh, Chiron. I really like Devourer's Gauntlet, because if you're going to be building stacks with Transcendence, you'll have to be building two times the stacks, which I don't really like that. Um, and with Soul Eater, you get health, lifesteal, and attack speed, and some protections while you're at it. So that's why I really build lifesteal most of the time. I mean, you can go Devourer's Gauntlet... Um, but I really like to go for Soul Eater instead. So you can go Death Toll, Soul Eater, or not Death Toll, Soul Eater, Death Toll, Spike Gauntlet, uh, Death Toll Boots, Death Toll Morningstar. All depends on your preference. Boots would be a pretty safe pick because it'll give you uh, movement speed and you can get away. But Morningstar and Spike Gauntlet, they're just helping you prepare for later on. And then with the core, uh, you're going to want to have Warrior Tabby, Haste and Fatalis, Soul Eater. Actually, I would have put fa Haste and Fatalis here, but it doesn't do damage. So I decided, you know what, whatever, I'll put it in the core. But you will be getting Transcendence because it does give you mana and then it gives you a lot of power. So that's really why I have Transcendence in here. Uh, I like to go with Transcendence with some a lot of my gods. Uh, I would have gone with it in my Bologna build, but I didn't really find uh, Bologna to be much of a uh, ability type god. You really want to focus her uh, basic attacks, stuff like that. But Karen can go either way. Um, I like to build him with Transcendence just because he gives him a lot of power. Uh, you can go ahead and go differently, but this is what I have in my build. So, like I said, Warrior Tabby, pretty standard. You can go Ninja Tabby if you want to have more attack speed. Because um, you don't get much attack speed in this build if, unless you go Haste of Italis. Um, that'll give you uh, the bulk of your attack speed. But if you want more attack speed and you want to be more uh, basic attack based, go ahead and go Ninja Tabby. Uh, and then, of course, Soul Leader, like I said, will give you attack speed and will give you a lot of health. So, that's really nice. And then I kind of already went over Transcendence. Um, basically for the damage and for the mana that will help you stay in lane because then with com coupled with his uh, passive and with all the life still you're gonna be able to get you will be able to stay in lane pretty for quite a long time especially because uh, you won't really have a mana problem with running out of mana and with health you can just re regenerate health pretty quickly on um, the next one to get executioner uh, this is like the only pen you're gonna get in this build uh, you can go ahead and ditch executioner for like Titan's Bane if you want but this gives you attack speed and it does work pretty well against your enemies, so Executioner is a pretty nice uh, addition to the build. And then you can go crits. Um, let's see, I already have like, what, five items if you count Warrior Tabby, Haste of Talos, Soul Eater. Yeah, five items here. So you can go crits. If you were to go crits, I would suggest going Rage um, if you want to be more basic attack based. And then I would go more Deathbringer if you want to be more uh, ability based, because this gives you a lot more power than Rage. But Rage will make it so you will crit a lot more often than Deathbringer will. Uh, so you can go and do what you will with that. I really go Rage. Uh, this, like this, these right here are my builds with him. Um, however, if you want to go defensive, or not necessarily defensive, but if you want to build some defense, um, I would suggest ditching the crit item and going for one of these. A Magi's Blessing, uh, really, you would go with for this if you're going against a team that has a lot of CC. Um, if not, then go for Spirit Robe. This gives you like the only cooldowns you will get in your entire build. And it gives you decent protections and damage mitigation. So go ahead and go for Spirit Robe. Um, or instead of ditching the crits, you can ditch Transcendence because 
Transcendence will make you a little bit more uh, ability based, but it'll still help you a lot when you're doing basic attacks. But you can go ahead and ditch that, go for some crits, and go for a defensive item at the same time. Now, I won't tell you on active wise, I won't tell you what to get for actives. That's really on situational based because, like, if you're going against Ares, for example, you're not going to really build sprint first. You're going to build beads first. So I can't really tell you uh, what you're going to get for actives, but I would suggest getting sprint uh, mainly because. It'll just make you really, really hard to catch up to, unless you had a slow on you, because you have Warrior Tabby, Haste and Vitalis, and then you, that's pretty fast already. You have your 3, which will, is a dash, so you can get away with that, and then if you have Greater Sprint, it'll just make you really, really hard to catch up to. So that's why I would suggest getting Sprint, but other than that, do what you will with your actives. Um, this is a pretty decent build. This works a lot of the time, actually, not going to lie. I really don't go def with defense, but if I were to get defense, I would get those two items right there. Unless you're going against a team that does a lot more of magical damage or a lot more physical damage, then you can go for something along the lines of Gaia Stone, Bulwark, or uh, Mystical Mail or something. But I really don't like to build the fence on ADCs. A lot of people don't. And you can go ahead and try, but if you're going against one of those, like I said, really hardcore teams that go against, like, I don't know, on those rare occasions you go against a team that builds a lot of, that has, like, all physical damage. Then you can go ahead and go for some physical defense, but really, it's not really need for an ADC. Your, your your job really is to just do a lot of damage, get a lot of kills, get a lot of towers down, and basically win the game. So that is it for the build for you guys, and after this, we will be going over the playstyle of Chiron, and when I get back, I will see you all then. Okay guys, so here we are, welcome back, and so for starters, in the mid, er, not mid game, early game, you're going to really want to play Chiron somewhat conservatively. Um, we want to go for, as, when you level, get level 1, you want to go for your 1, of course. And then when you get to level 2, you want to go for your 2. And then when you get to level 3, you want to go for your 1 again. Then when you get to level 4, you want to go for your 3, that way you have an escape. And then when you, when you get to level 5, of course, you want to get your ult. Now, you really want to get your 1 first, mainly because it's a really good, uh, not crit, uh, clear item. Not item, but uh, ability that you can use. And it's really nice because it'll allow you to clear camps a lot quicker and allow you to clear uh, the waves a lot quicker and stuff like that. And so, as you can see in the gameplay, I know it's pretty bad gameplay. Um, trust me, in the late game, it gets a lot better. Um, really, the other team just had us out uh, matched because the way I was building at the time, I wasn't really building very optimal. I just had to go for boots first in this game, and it was until later I realized that I should have been going uh, for something along the lines of lifesteal, so I could have gone for Spike Gauntlet in this game or Transcendence or Morningstar earlier in the game. That was my mistake to make in the game. But really, you want to play a little bit conservatively. You can go ahead and push up if your uh, opponents don't really aren't really the type to go push up. Like if they're a little timid, a little scared for pushing themselves up, you can go ahead and push them up, push them back to their tower, keep their wave up there, and whenever you need to, you can go back and get uh, transcendence or anything because Chiron does take a lot of mana in the early game, and so being able to have a lot of mana, or you can go for some potions, but being able to have a lot of mana will help you in the end game, and so. Now we're going to skip ahead to where it gets to the uh, mid game for you guys and here and I'll be right back when we get there. Okay guys so here we are in the mid game and as you can see I did go opt, I, I did opt to go for Fatalis instead of Transcendence which honestly was a mistake on my part but I could have, I probably should have gone for Transcendence anyways but um, as you can see I do have my 1 and my 2 completely maxed out which is good because those are what you want to max out first because they're going to be your clear and they're going to do a lot of damage to your opponents. Followed by my ult, which is honestly you can't really like finish it last. You have to complete other uh, other abilities before you can go ahead and upgrade your ult to the fullest. But you want to upgrade your ult whenever you can because it's going to be a lot of power for you, and it's also going to be able to, like I said, hit it'll hit through walls pretty much, so you can do a lot of damage through that and be really surprising your enemies. Um, you really don't want to upgrade your three as much because I mean it's just really used to, as a getaway. But you can go ahead and try to use it as damage. I mean sometimes what I do. I would uh, use my 1, and if the 1 doesn't kill the minion wave, I would go ahead and use my 3 and just wreck up the minion wave like that. You can go ahead and opt to do that, but I choose not to unless, you know, I don't really feel any sense of danger. Um, so yeah, right now my team honestly is doing pretty bad, but when I get to the late game on the other hand, that's when I have some pretty good gameplay to show you guys, so uh, stay tuned for that, and really, I think towards the late game I do have most of my build completed, because sometimes... I don't have my full build completed um, when I get to the late game. Sometimes I win or sometimes I lose before I can have my full build. So hopefully, I think I have most of my items for the last. So anyways, when I get to the late game, I'll be right back for you guys. And when I get there, I will see you all then. 
Okay, guys, so here we are in the late game. I almost said mid game for a second there. Um, as you can see, I do have one crit item. I don't think, honestly, I was looking through the footage, and I don't think I went through and was able to complete my full build. But, as you can, with the gameplay coming up pretty soon, you can see my team does get a lot better from this. Uh, we do end up bounce back from this. And really, all you have to do is be able to fight with your teammates whenever possible, because if you're not with your teammates when they're doing a team fight, there is a large possibility that they will lose because mainly it will probably be something around the lines of like a 4v5 or 3v5 and that's not very good for your team because then they don't have one that's one less player they don't have and it's just you know more kills that pro or more deaths will probably lay upon your team and that's not very good to have on in a game of conquest because then that's pretty much guaranteeing or sealing the fate of your team losing so whenever there's a teammate team fight because there are going to be a lot of team fights in the late game you are going to want to be able to get with your team as soon as possible as quick as possible and whenever possible because then that will ensure that your team doesn't lose that will ensure your team doesn't lose that team fight i mean there will be times where you do get into a team fight and your team does lose but that's okay i mean at least they can't really say that you weren't there i mean that kind of sucks the most really is when there's a team fight and you aren't there and you can't help your teammates and it's kind of you to blame i mean you could have been that big change in you know that team fight you could have won the team fight for your team so just remember to be with your team a lot um there was a lot of team fights going on in my game that i wasn't a part of but towards the end i started being a like a part of those team fights which really did help my team out a lot we did secure fire giant we secured gold fury and we secured the rest of the game and with that all being said guys that's really the play style of chiron i know it was a little bit quick uh, but hopefully you guys get the gist of it. You know, you want to be able to play conservative at the beginning somewhat. I mean, you don't want to be pushing tower like too far. And then towards the mid game, you are going to want to be a little bit aggressive once you have mo more and more of your build. Um, if you go for transcendence, that'll help your team a lot because it'll give you a lot more power. And when you do crits and stuff like that, it's going to do a lot more damage. And with that being said, that is pretty much the end of the build guide and whole playstyle guide for you guys. I hope you all enjoyed. If you want to see other build guides, please let me know in the comment section below because I will be glad to do more. Um, like This is only my second one. I know this was pretty bad still. I hope to be a lot better because I'm still trying to learn the gist. Uh, I'm, I'm using also a new uh, recording software, so that also doesn't help too much. I used to use Camtasia. Now I'm trying to use Adobe because Adobe d is a lot better in my opinion. But uh, it does have a learning curve to it, so I'm trying to learn how to uh, edit videos a lot better for you guys. And hopefully you guys uh, do continue to watch my build guides and all the rest of my videos. I guess I hope you all enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you did. And don't forget, like I said, to leave in the comment section below a god that you would like to see on my channel. And with that being said, I will leave you to it, guys. And I will just... Oh, never mind. The gameplay's already done. I was letting it all go through. So anyways, guys, I will see you all later. Peace.